Good morning. There he is, Nick Shaheen. How you doing? There I am. I'm doing fantastic. How about you guys? Not you, too bad. Did you? How'd you do with the momentum sell-off there yesterday? Loved it. <laughs> loved it. <laughs> yeah, we we were short a few of them. So nice. uh, I, I I know I heard uh, Joel say he, he's dying about the the Chipotle thing, and I was short Chipotle. I was short LinkedIn. And I said to go short Tesla, but I was probably the only one that didn't short it. But was happy to hear that all my friends <laughs> did short it, and they made some money on that too. Uh, first, let's go to the how did how did you play uh, the CMG? We'd been talking about that consolidation. Boy, those uh, that options market. I mean, what do you do? Do you just stick your orders out there and let them come and get you? Because I was trying to. Uh, to play them with some of the weeklies and even going a little bit farther out. And it was just ridiculous prices and spreads. I mean, they, how, how do you play those? You know, I, didn't, I don't know why I, the spreads don't bother me. If okay. I want the trade, I'll forgo a few pennies to get it. Um, the way I did the CMG, it was straightforward this time. I just did a debit put spread for the, for the month. So this week, basically, I did it um, on Friday. And it was uh, the strikes I chose were 660 and 657 and a half. So I bought the uh, September put at 660, paid some money for that. And then at the same time, same order, um, um, I sold the 657.50 in order to reduce my exposure at that. And I think the price was 70 cents at the time. And then uh, yesterday, whatever happened, happened. And wherever you got out, you got out. So it was an easy double. Uh, almost at the open. It was hard to execute, so I just put the order out and I leave it there. And as soon as it gets heat on the downside, it'll trigger. Okay, so you're out of it. I am out of it, yes. Uh, I have a few people that are letting it ride and trying to squeeze every penny out of it. I'm not that guy. I take my greens and run. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's a uh, been consistent pattern. And uh, you said, what uh, What did you go on the Tesla? Was it on the downgrade or did you see something technically in it? Um, I, I I have to look up my, my write-up, but um, I didn't take the Tesla trade. So, But I did say Tesla has some downside coming. So um, the, the few lottos that I said uh, to, to, to test out for this week, uh, Tesla was one of them. Uh, so Chipotle and LinkedIn and uh, you know all three of them obviously among with a whole bunch of other moments got shellacked which we'll talk about here today i was listening in to you guys i made some notes and we'll talk exactly to those notes you guys were mentioning tesla i said you know it will be the short of a decade or century whatever it will be a great short because it's a car company I don't know if, unless they bring out something new, and I, I just don't believe in the upside potential that it has. Uh, most of its sales are here around my house <laughs> in California. Everybody's got one. And, uh, but I don't know how the battery life is going to translate to colder weather. Um, I, I don't know how the battery operated cars are going to be re received in the rest of the country. Uh, California is pretty different. I mean, metro areas are pretty different than the rest of the country, which is the masses. So it's still a $100,000 car that is unproven. It's cool looking, but it, it's just a car company, an American car company. They don't sell so, that many they cars do either. Yeah. They don't. They really don't sell that many cars either. But has it hasn't it already gone through a winter though? I mean, wasn't last winter weren't those those Tesla cars out on the road here um, in our part of the country? Yeah, I don't. I, I'm not doubting that. But in masses, I don't think so. Like people said, the people used to say that uh, PC is susceptible to hacks when PC was PC platforms were pretty dominant over Macs. Uh, my, my theory was no, it's because they're more prolific. I mean, there, there's more of them out there, so people hack them uh, more often. But now that you have almost an even split or a lot more Macs than they used to be, people will hack the Macs. So we don't have enough Teslas out there to judge them like we judge a Toyota or Hondas. And and if they want to get to mass markets, they're going to hit the same uh, issues that car companies have. So the Tesla theory for me is more bearish than bullish, unless he comes out and delivers something. Like he said something about easier merging onto traffic. Uh, I don't know if that's an innovation everybody's waiting for, but even that fizzled. I haven't seen anything. Uh, that was like last year sometime. I can't remember when. So I think Google is more innovative to cars than Tesla is, yet it doesn't get credit for it. And uh, and Elon is a risk in himself. Uh, how long is he going to be at Tesla? Any hints of him leaving Tesla will cause the stock to get slashed in half, no doubt about it. 
in my mind. But that's my opinion. So I'm bearish Tesla. I, I've been shorting it off and on all year. Uh, last time I shorted it, I did a debit spread similar to the one in CMG I mentioned, and I also added uh, income by selling a credit call spread to finance the debit spread. So it was a free, it was a little riskier, but it was a free trade. So I was bearish Tesla. Tesla. Uh, LinkedIn, I was also bearish. I did a debit spread that went against me because LinkedIn didn't drop in time. Uh, but I didn't just sit there and let my money dwindle. Um, I added a credit call spread. So first I did a debit spread, like I just mentioned in CMG, similar to that. And my level was 207.5 and 205. So I, I bought the 207.5 put and sold the 205 put to limit my entry cost. And what did that cost you? <laughs> just trying to get the risk return. What did that cost you? Um, I'd have to dig it up. It was a while back, and I said it, it went against me. I think it was like 50 cents. Yeah. or something like that and it started dropping dropping it almost dropped in half so i sold the credit call spread at the what was it 247 and a half on the pop and bought the 250 behind it and that brought in income to offset the losses right so now i was sitting even again and then the drop yesterday i got out of it with like a 10 you know 10 percent green it wasn't much but had i waited for the rest of the day i would have could have gotten out in a double so but the point is the the call was correct and whoever was following me made some money a little more than me but that also makes me happy too so you can't hit home runs every time you do something like that the last cmg was a home run this cmg was a pretty good uh and the price line the other day was a definite home run and so you make the call you put the play and if it's a lot of play you know, there's no issues with that so you gotta i'm not doing any credit spreads with the momentum stocks because of the moves you saw yesterday i just can't trust it either way up or down the one thing for you first-time listeners that I love the way Nick sets it up is he always uh, limits his risk, though. He doesn't just sell a call or just sell a put. He'll always buy a little bit higher strike price so that he's limiting his risk, and that's the whole credit call play. Um, and that's you know the, the main thing that you have to do, right, Nick? Because sometimes these things can just, when you're wrong, you can really get hurt if you're not limiting your risk. Absolutely. Uh, I think last week you asked me if I do it uh, naked when we were talking about selling calls. I said no. I've done it one or two times but it was like you know 40 30 percent away from current price so and it was temporary and i knew it was temporary last week i think uh joel you asked me if i was selling the 1960s uh in order to do an iron condor of some sorts on the sm on the sbx uh, i said not yet i'm still waiting and yesterday was kind of like why have i not done it yet the uh, I've been telling you guys weeks weeks on end now that the bears have not let go of the 2000 line, and now we see why. And the option, the open interest, they've been holding on to the 2000 line and holding on to the 100 Apple line. Apple theoretically should not close over 100 this week based on the open interest as of today. So, so that's last night's data. Something's going on at Apple this morning. I don't know what it is. Uh, you know, I thought a lot of the chug up to here was Apple itself or unusual buying. It was not regular retail or regular action, price action. I can't prove it. It's just my perception of it. And we'll find out, I guess, when the news comes out. And so I have not sold risk where I think it's iffy. Like yesterday, a lot of the followers were asking, where can I sell to do an iron condor? I said, I wouldn't, you know, take less premium um, and go down to the 40s, 1940 instead of 1960. So give yourself some breathing room and definitely make it an iron condor so it's a self hedge position. So you sell risk <clears throat> below and above current price. So if something moves, then you can close the whole thing close to even. But, uh, you know, this is a, a violent week. I laid out four scenarios given the inflation in Yellen for this week, and now we add to it uh, Scotland, which I didn't account for. So the four scenarios was the CPI, if you guys want to talk about it. The, I'll talk about the worst one instead of wasting time. The worst one is if the CPI comes in hot, so we have inflation actually rearing its head where we can actually calculate it, and then Yellen comes out and says some hawkish stuff. If these two combine, look out below. Okay, what about uh, what about price line here? Uh, you know, people were po probably expecting it to pause here at the uh, eleven eighty level. That's not the case. Uh, have you been uh, playing that at all from either side of the market? 
uh, after last week's win on the lotto ticket, I have not done anything in Priceline. This is a squishy area in Priceline. Anything below 1200 and between 1200 and 1100 because the previous candles are pretty big. So, you know, as they say, easy come, easy go. It makes it when it's a big candle, it makes it like a shoots and ladder. You know, it's a previous area that's been quick to go through, so it may you know, it's squishy. Uh, and also, did I read something about deliverable notes or something like that? So that might put pressure on the price today. I, I didn't read the details, so there's some sort of an offering. Uh, so we'll see when it opens. It doesn't usually show its hand until the open. So I'm not trying to. I want to catch this knife because this is a Momo that actually makes money, and uh, but I'm not rushing into it. So if I do anything on Priceline right now would be some sort of a, a December Iron Condor or something if I'm really um, you know absolutely must trade it otherwise you it's you know given that there's no inflation so they say cash is a position I mean you don't have to be invested in everything all the time Nick you sound pretty cautious here I've been pretty cautious. Uh, every time, every write-up I do, and I do like two a day, at least two a day, and at least one video. Every write-up I do, I say I, I have a staple statement in there in bold. I am still a seller of every pop. Now, you said it today, Dennis. Every bounce has been sold. Those are your words today. Well, I, I will add a caution to it. I say that not because I want to believe it. I'll say that as long as there is no fundamental change. Where is the catalyst to the positive? I don't see a catalyst. Uh, something like Yellen coming out and say we have a new QE coming out. That's a catalyst. Or we decided not to raise rates forever. That's a catalyst. Well, these are ridiculous, but um, that's the point. There's no positive catalyst in sight. So every pop has been relief of something bad didn't happen. Uh, over the weekend, um, okay, we, you know, we didn't have Ukraine issues, pop. Uh, we were expecting, oh my gosh, we're going to hit Syria or something. We didn't, pop. It, every pop has been a relief of something happened, that something bad that could have happened, didn't happen. So, you know, or, oh, we, rumors of Yellen's going to, like, for example, when Yellen's uh, statement comes out this week, if she doesn't say anything hawkish, we're going to pop. That's a relief pop that Yellen didn't say anything bad. It's not a change in the fundamentals that causes fuel another rally. I will sell that pop cautiously, but I will sell it. And if you want to talk specifics, I can tell you exactly how I sold it in recent times and how much money it made, and you can probably emulate it. I mean, it's a foolproof strategy, in my opinion. It's uh, the, the Nasdaq. I sold the pop via a December a credit call spread at forty three hundred. So Nasdaq is now it was for four thousand eighty. So sold the forty three hundred and bought the forty three ten behind it. So ten dollar wide spread, and I collected two dollars and forty cents for it. Right. So um, not much risk to collect two dollars and forty cents way up there at the forty three hundred and now it's showing a dollar forty five so there's a dollar in in profit right there i can close it by buying it back for a dollar forty five dollar fifty depends on how the execution goes and if i did ten lots that's a thousand bucks in two days yeah you can't complain about that p day and uh garrett just popped in there apple news is that they may not get china approval until next year for the iphone 6 so i don't know omg <laughs> oh, oh you knew there was something happening is that funny listen, listen yesterday in the chat room i haven't recorded maybe i'm gonna dig it up i said nobody's talking about the fact that Nobody's making enough, a big enough deal of the fact that there is no iPhone in China, the new one. I mean, I thought China was like the new leg up for Apple, and they buried it. It's like, oh, we don't have it in China. I whispered it. Why not? Like, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they have it in China? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But that's that's my point. Nobody was talking about it. They mentioned it uh, when the news came out, and everybody was all enamored with a stinking watch. Will you watch a watch? I, I no way <laughs> am I gonna look at the watch in order to figure out what's going on with the way <laughs> oh my gosh that is such a loser proposition all right let's touch on some of the other momos here and we also got to talk get your take on the yahoo alibaba thing dennis and i got a major bet going on that <laughs> we don't actually yet but we're trying to figure yeah we out do the parameters for it. no we Bring do the lawyers. we do Bring the lawyers. october 16th it trades 38 by October 16th, Dennis, we already made that. Brent wrote okay, it down. Okay, okay, well, I'll take that. Wait, it may trade 38 today. 
Oh, yeah. thank you, Nick. Go ahead, what Nick. What do you think, Nick? Who's going to win that bet? Who's going to win that I bet? Think, I think the bearish... You know, yesterday when everybody... It's a long ways down, yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 yesterday when you guys were saying that... Uh, not you guys. That everybody was saying that everybody's selling the Momos in order to collect money for Alibaba. Two things. What about all that cash on the sideline? You know, isn't that play into the... So I don't buy that. Also, the only one that makes sense to sell to buy Alibaba is Yahoo. If if there you've you been go. buying Yahoo because of the Alibaba, wouldn't you dump a, a Yahoo in order to buy the Alibaba? <laughs> I mean, uh, it doesn't make sense. If you have profits buried in Yahoo, you should dump it to buy the Alibaba, which is what caused you to buy Yahoo in the beginning. So the options market agrees with Joel. Uh, 40, 42 should be a wall this week for Yahoo. And it's, what, 42 and a half now? So I vote red on Yahoo to, this week. I love Based Nick Red Shane. short term, too. But as it gets to 38 by October 16th, that's major red. That's the question. Yeah, well, you'll get, I, I, I can't. I sold one of those deep. I was just playing your strategy there, Nick. <laughs> yeah, I I'll blame it on Nick. I sold money puts to him. <laughs> oh, you did, yeah. Well, then. now the problem is I need to go buy a thirty-seven from somebody else so I can hedge myself. So it's, <laughs> I've it's left myself open-ended. <laughs> no, no, it's an October deal you guys have. Well, based on the October open interest. Okay, and this is what I want to hear. Under forty. Is, under forty. That's not good. How low under forty? <laughs> Well, you know, there's a good wall at. Oh, gosh, my mouse. Tell me, thirty-eight. Tell me, 38. thirty-five. <laughs> thirty-five. <laughs> you know, I think I'll take the sandwich bet. I mean, I'm on the side of give me the sandwich. Isn't that what you guys bet? Sandwich. Yeah, pot belly. Yeah, well, that's a pot belly sandwich. I, I hate to make you fly sandwiches. out from California to deliver me uh, that sandwich, but we may 30, have to. Yeah. Thirty. Thirty-eight is doable. I'll have to download the data and follow up with you today. But All right, I, we'll get him next week. We'll get his details there. I'm calling it thirty-eight. Is doable. I'll take the 38. If I was to be forced to choose between 40 plus or 38, I'll choose 38. Oh, he likes it, Joel. He likes it. I, I'm not I'm really trouble confident. Because that Nick guy, he's pretty smart. I could be in trouble. Real quick, <laughs> Facebook and Twitter. Let's touch on those and then we'll let you go. What about yeah. Facebook here? Uh, boy, found someone really wanting to sell at the $78 level. Was there for several days. Is this just a little dip to buy here or you need some more downside? I'm not buying anything here, okay. uh, not because the world is ending, but because the only reason I would be buying right here is hoping for a bounce. I don't have a fundamental reason to buy it here, and I, I like the technicals, but they don't drive. I don't troll the technical charts for trades because I'm not that good of a technical analyst. Uh, but I do use them. Like if I was, if I wanted to go long Facebook and then I look at technicals, and the technicals are warning me for whatever reason, I stop and listen to the technicals um you know i see you know the trend is broken so i'm not going to stand in front of it um i'll wait and see for facebook i need more data uh there's no rush it, it was look it looked like it was going to break out and it didn't uh plus let's say i was wrong about the, the iwatch whatever the watch and everybody starts using watches i think that was going to hurt facebook because they figured out mobile but based on a phone screen they didn't figure out mobile based on the watch screen. I think less people would, if more people. Oh, would that's a good act, point. That's a good point. If, if more people get things done on their phone, they're less likely to be in front of the PC. That's or in front of their phone, the the big phone. Hmm. More people do more stuff on watches, less time on their big phones. Then Facebook is going to get hurt until they figure it out. Okay, Nick Shaheen, Market Fi Maven, and the author of Create Income with Option Spreads. Nick, thanks a lot. As always, boy, we covered all the momos. We covered the market. You give some great, uh, great advice and very sensible trade uh, trading strategies uh, to our audience. We really appreciate it. Have a good week. Be careful on that quad witch on Friday, and we'll be back with you next Tuesday. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it.